I can see an enemy scout. <laughs> That's an enemy. Shit! Enemy over here! <laughs> That's one of their scouts. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. Don't you dare. Oh no! We have taken objective butter. Hey guys, Operator Drewski here, and today we're going to be going over the Light Tank in Battlefield 1. The Light Tank is undoubtedly one of the most common and also one of the most powerful tanks in Battlefield, I think. And uh, the Light Tank, in the hands of a really, really skilled player, I've seen Light Tank players go up to 80 kills with zero deaths. Um, I think I actually saw one guy once go 118. It wasn't in the game that I was in, but I saw a screenshot of it. 118 to zero in a Light Tank. And that's just how the light tank is. If you really master the light tank by yourself, if you know how to use the ammunition, you know angles, you know how to engage other tanks and how to engage infantry, um, then you really can master the light tank. And if you know exactly how to use it, which I'm gonna be giving you a few tips and tricks today to really try to hone yourself in on really how to use the light tank, then you can do extremely well in the light tank and it's a really fun vehicle to use. So that's why I'm making this guide today. So first off, this guide is going to be focused on the main version of the light tank, which is the light close support tank. There's also two other classes or versions or variants of the light tank, the light flanker tank and also the light howitzer tank. The light close support tank is the default one you get, and it has two main cannons. It also has uh, two other kind of options or abilities as well that I'm going to be going over as well. So first off, let's talk about the ammunition. The first type of ammunition is your main tank shell. Uh, it is a anti-armor, like high explosive. It pretty much just can do any job you want it to. It can take out infantry, it can take out buildings, planes, tanks, jeeps, other vehicles, or anything of the like. You can fire it at the blimp, you can fire it at the tank, or the, sorry, the train, or even the dreadnought, and uh, it's it's going to do pretty dang well with any anything you fire it at. The secondary weapon is a canister shell. This is primarily and only going to be used against infantry in certain situations. Uh, if there's infantry running at quick speeds at medium to close range, I usually use the canister shell. Um, otherwise, though, I honestly use the main shell for them because it's easier sometimes just to shoot at their feet with the main shell, and it usually will have such a high explosive splash radius that it usually can kill an infantryman uh, even if you hit them from, like, let's say five feet away with the main shell. Um, pretty much how to use this and, and what the light tank, I, I guess the definition of the light tank is, is that it is a tank that can only do unsustained fire. What I mean by that is that it cannot suppress an area or suppress enemies for longer than let's say uh, 25 to 30 seconds other than it needing to go backwards and reload and then coming back to the battlefield again. You honestly cannot sit there in one single spot in the middle of a front line and just fire continuously like you could with the older tanks in Battle 4 or 3. You now have this interesting method of reloading and cooldown timers that makes you have to engage very, very quickly and then pull back to reload and sometimes repair. Pretty much how the reloading works in the light tank is that in the light close support tank at least, you have four rounds in total. Now, if you fire these four rounds all out, it will slowly replenish them over time. But if you do not wait for the reloading to go all the way up to four out of four reloaded, if you wait, let's say, until only the second round is reloaded to fire your weapon, you now have a massive cooldown timer between your first round and your second round being reloaded. So let's say you were to, um, you were to fire all your four shots out at another tank. Then you were to wait until all four shots had reloaded, and then you were to fire them again. Overall, you would get more shots off in a minute of time doing that type of method rather than, let's say, firing all four shots off, waiting for uh, only one round to reload, and then firing that one round, and then waiting for the next round to reload, and then firing that one round. You are wasting a lot of time if you only fire that first out of four rounds because you add a gigantic cooldown timer between reloading your next round. So it is better to kind of fight with guerrilla warfare tactics where you engage very, very quickly, then you pull back to fully reload your ammo. And then once you're fully reloaded, you go back into the fight. Because you'll notice that when you're fighting with a light tank, if you 
fire, let's say your first or second round, and don't wait until your fourth round to actually begin firing, it takes a massive longer time, massively longer time, to be able to uh, get rounds out of your cannon and actually into the hearts of the enemies. <laughs> um, pretty much that's as basic as it gets. The light close support tank at least also has a quick repair option that will repair you out of a critical state. Let's say if something is damaged like your tracks, your turret, or the rear, just like the main body, like the engine of your tank is damaged um, and, and, and it's in critical condition, you can instantly press a button and instantly repair that, which is pretty dang useful. Um, and also you have a supply drop type of mechanic as well so if your squad is following you around you can actually really help them out by dropping two large med kit and also ammo boxes behind you which is dang really helpful for your team now when fighting in tank versus tank combat which i recommend that you don't really engage heavy tanks and land ships in the front like just directly with this tank because it is a lot more lightweight and it has a lot less firepower than those types of tanks but when engaging any tank at all try to fire at 90 degree angles try to hit them at 90 degree angles try to not fire at shallow angles of their armor you really want to hit them where your uh, round will make a T against their armor where your round comes in and it hits at a 90 degree straight angle and so it makes as much penetration as possible because if you hit at a shallow angle you'll get ricochets you'll actually get a lot less damage if you hit at a shallow angle and if you're shallow enough you actually get a ricochet where the entire round doesn't even pierce the armor it just bounces right off and that does something like two or three damage whenever you ricochet against somebody, which doesn't hurt them barely at all. It's not even going to really scratch their paint off at all. One person who made a very interesting video on this is by the name of Fog of Gaming, and I'm going to put his video in the description down below. He goes over angle of attack of these rounds and how to use the light tank really, really well. And there's an interesting method that he describes in his video, which is driving backwards in the light tank. The light tank basically has four or I guess three different kind of modes of hit points. The front of the tank is very, very sensitive, the sides are a little bit less sensitive, and the rear is the least sensitive. So if you were to aim your rear of the tank at the enemies, you actually take a lot less damage than if you were to aim your front of the tank at the enemies, which is what most people do because if you're driving, driving forwards, you're going to be aiming the front of your vehicle forwards. But there's actually no downside to driving backwards. There's no lower speed or anything. There's nothing like that. So driving backwards and having your rear facing the enemies is actually better because it takes less damage when hit by anything. And as well, the angles of your tank will just be a little bit less 90 degree-ish towards the enemies if you aim your tank backwards towards the enemies. So as a light tank, you are also the most fragile of all the other tanks in the battlefield. Heavy tanks can take a lot more damage and they have a lot more rounds than you do. Um, the land ships can also take a lot more damage and have a lot more rounds than you. But you do have one thing. You don't have to communicate with other members of your tank or just hope that the other members of your tank know what they're doing to be able to fight well in the battlefield. And that's why a lot of these light tanks get these kill streaks, is that they don't really have to depend on other players. And communication, miscommunication, is actually one of the main reasons for losses in real world battles, is just pure miscommunication. A, a light tank is one of the most I think powerful in terms of like if you're by yourself if you don't have friends to communicate with then this is the tank to go to so when you're fighting against other tanks in the battlefield I wouldn't really try to stray towards um, either the heavy tanks or the land ships directly I would only fight them if they are distracted or being attacked also by something else so if you have some assaults firing at them uh, and throwing grenades at them and stuff definitely go in for the kill because if you have a single assault guy and a light tank attacking a heavy tank Usually, if the heavy tank doesn't isn't able to kill the assault that's throwing grenades and shooting his anti-tank rocket gun, um, you usually will kill him. You usually will kill the heavy tank in easy time because an assault, probably two assaults at most, are going to be easily able to kill a heavy tank, even if they uh, are not that good at the game. Even if they throw their grenades and they miss a few AT rocket guns, if there's two assaults near a guy or near a heavy tank, sorry, they're probably going to kill him pretty easily. So again, if you're by yourself, don't really try to face these tanks head on, uh, especially when they can easily hop out their tank, throw anti-tank grenades at you, uh, or there's probably going to be other people in these light tanks, or sorry, not light tanks, the heavy tanks or the land ships uh, that are probably going to easily hop out and try to kill you just with whatever grenades they have at the time. And overall, like I said before, they just have a lot more firepower and a lot more armor than you do. 
How to engage heavy tanks and land ships is that with heavy tanks and land ships, you want to hug them. You literally want to surprise them. You want to drive around them and surprise them from the rear, which sounds really weird, but especially with the land ship, you actually want to almost ram them in the backside. <laughs> I know how weird that sounds, but that actually makes it very, very difficult for them to be able to turn around to be able to shoot you. Land ships are a little bit more scary because their field of view or their angle of attack is a little bit better. They can fire 180 degrees from left to right side, and heavy tank is more like around, I would say, 100 or maybe 90 degrees. Um, and so with a land ship, you want to attack from the rear. You definitely want to get right to their backside so that when they try to turn around to be able to shoot you, they're just not going to be as fast enough as you are because you're in a light tank. They cannot spin faster than you can drive, so you can always stay behind them if you get up right to their butts. Now with a heavy tank, you actually want to get on the sides because usually a heavy tank will try to drive forwards or backwards to try to distance themselves from you. You want to approach a heavy tank from its rear and hug its left or right side and then fire on it at a 90 degree angle into its left or right armor. This is in my opinion the best way because if you're behind a heavy tank, he can occasionally push you away or he can drive forwards and then turn around and you can lose him. Getting these tanks at a distance from you is a danger. Being right up close to them is actually less dangerous than it is being farther away from them and engaging them one-on-one, -on -one, let's say, across an open field. So with something, again, like a heavy tank, you want to hug their left or right side, and with a land ship, you want to hug their rear side. Also, when engaging infantry, try to not focus your first rounds out of your magazine on the recons, the medics, or even the supports. Try to focus your main fire on assaults, the people that can and will probably kill you if they have enough people trying to overwhelm you. Um, so again, try to focus, try to spot the enemies before you really move into an area, therefore you can see what class they are above their head, because usually you're so far away, you're not even going to be able to really tell what classes they are from a distance. So if you spot them, you usually are able to see the little medic icon, the support, the assault icon, and it's pretty easy to tell after that which ones you really need to say, okay, I need to engage that guy first because he can actually damage me. In some of the footage here, you actually see me becoming friends with some of the enemies, and that's just because this match was absolutely potato. This was after Christmas Day, so almost like 70% of the opposite team was under the rank of 20 and did not know how to play the game. And so I was having a lot of fun just becoming friends with players in this match um, that were on the hostile team, but they wouldn't ever be assaults because if they were assaults, they would actually be able to damage me and kill me. Now, I made friends with medics and recons because I knew that they couldn't do anything against me, and it was just hilarious to see them kind of like cowering in little spots as I was trying to become their friends. Um, but whenever somebody would spawn on them that was an assault, I would have to kill the assault because I knew the assault was about to throw some anti-tank grenades or shoot an anti-tank rocket gun at me, and I would have to just, you know, finish the job. So again, my main three points are, you know, you're a tank of unsustained fire. Point one is that you're unsustained fire. You need to attack with guerrilla tactics. You cannot stay in one spot for a long time without having to go behind the line, get into cover to reload and repair. Always attack quickly, then move back to repair and rearm, and then move back into the fight again, and just go in front, back, front, back of the front line again and again and again. That is the best way to use a light tank. Never push too far in front or go in a place totally by yourself because you will get overwhelmed at some point. Um, point two is this mastering of the angles of these tanks. Always drive backwards, especially if you're going to be facing enemies. Um, sometimes you see me driving forwards, sometimes you see me driving backwards. Depending on the situation, depending on how much I actually care about living at that point, um, I was driving forwards or driving backwards in the footage. But if you're really wanting to be super hardcore, drive backwards all the time. And again, go watch Fog of Gaming's video because it was pretty dang good. Point three is never engage tanks head on and engage heavy tanks by hitting their left side or hugging, sorry, their left side or their right side and also engage land ships by engaging their rear side and hugging their back. I guess there's a tip four as well where if you're engaging infantry and big groups of infantry, try to focus on the assaults first and the medics second because usually the medics will go to heal the assaults and also supports can have limpet charges, but usually they actually don't. So I usually engage both the assault and then the medics and so that the medics can't really do much because they're dead um, and that is the most efficient method that I've seen before in attacking just 
gigantic groups of people. So guys, hopefully this guide helped you out a little bit. This was kind of a be both a beginner and intermediate guide, uh, so I hope that this helps both the newer players to Battlefield that just got the game around Christmas, and also the people that might be a little bit more experienced in Battlefield 1 at the moment. And uh, I hope you have a good day, and I will see you in the next one. If you want me to do any more guides about any other vehicles or variants of the vehicles in this Battlefield 1 game, we call it, um, then please leave it down in the comment section down below, and I will check it out. The most upvoted comment will probably be the next guide video that I do over a vehicle, or maybe even a weapon of Battlefield 1. So you guys leave it down in the comment section down below and I will do a guide over it for you. So I'll see you in the next one and have a good day.